So we've started getting requests to do reviews on what we'd call hobby or small shop lasers. Our experience has always been with the larger, more industrial types, but we were sort of intrigued to try one of these to see if it would be usable in our business. We finally accepted an offer from a company called Creality to try out and review their 22 watt diode laser. Honestly, when we saw that it had an air assist feature, that's what finally changed our minds about trying one of these. As you can see, their system is nicely packaged with foam surrounding every part. The laser also includes what they're calling a built-in triple monitoring system. The system is supposed to monitor and alert you if there are issues with airflow, the lens, and probably most importantly, any flames. Here's all the parts and accessories that came with the system. We've got some cheap safety glasses, a power supply unit, the laser head, a rotary engraving accessory, which is uh, something we've never even tried, even on our other lasers, so it's pretty intriguing, the pump for the air assist system, spacers for the feet, and a small container that included primarily Allen wrenches and some extra screws. And finally, the feet. A cutting grid and a piece of sheet metal that goes under the cutting grid to protect the surface under the system from getting cooked were also included. You'll see those in a little bit. The spacers that came with the system can be stacked to raise it off your work surface if you have something really thick to engrave or if you're using the rotary engraving accessory. You can add one or two spacers per foot, which will provide an additional approximately 2.2 inches to the system's height. There are three holes in each corner of the laser's frame where you can mount the feet. I don't know that the location you pick really matters other than if the feet get in the way of something you're engraving. I just use the outermost holes. Given the size, weight, and construction of this thing, I can't imagine that bringing the feet in more would help with stability or anything. Installing the laser head was easy. It just slides into the bracket that's already attached to the gantry arm and two thumb screws lock it in place. The air assist pump was also easy to hook up. The air hose was already attached and routed along the laser's frame. One end of the hose had to be pushed onto the pump. The pump's connector was plugged into the laser frame, so it will turn the air assist on or off to automatically depending on how you set up your laser jobs in the software. Here's how the air hose is routed on the frame. The other end of the tube just needed to be slid out of the clamps and attached to the laser head. And while I was there, the laser head also needed to be plugged in. Uh, duh. duh. The air hose and wiring for the laser head were cleaned up a bit with the included velcro straps. Here's the piece of sheet metal I mentioned. I actually was wondering if they would include something like this for when you're cutting all the way through material. I was afraid we'd have to go buy something ourselves to protect our table. But nope, it's included. And of course they included the honeycomb cutting table which sits right on top of that piece of sheet metal. The power supply was plugged in. The laser is supposed to have the ability to run a job off a flash drive, but I plugged in the USB cable so that I could connect it to one of our computers. I guess it's a safety feature, but I'll never understand why all lasers seem to have these key switches. If you have little kids or morons around, then you can always just unplug the laser. I also don't see power tools with these key switches, but whatever. At this point, I wanted to test the laser, but I noticed an issue while I was moving the gantry arm back and forth. It wasn't square to the frame. There was actually some significant resistance or even binding while moving it. We had to email the company asking how exactly to fix the alignment. They were pretty responsive, even providing a document with step-by-step -step instructions showing which screws to loosen to get things aligned. Ah, much better. We're using Lightburn software, but the laser also comes with Laser Gerbil, which is open source and free to use. The laser connected to our Lightburn software with no issue, and I framed a sample job just to make sure it was communicating. 
You set the laser's focus by getting the thickness of your material and then using the manual focusing tool that came with the laser to set the laser head's height. The thumb screws holding the laser head in place are loosened and then you position the head on the correct step on the focusing tool and then tighten down the screws. Now, I couldn't help but notice how loose the laser head's bracket was. This didn't seem right, but I couldn't see how to tighten it down, so I just did the best I could with the height adjustment. I framed the sample job, but was having a hard time seeing exactly where the laser would be hitting. I'm used to seeing a red dot on our CO2 lasers to know their exact position. If this thing has that capability, I just don't know where it is. I just gave up and tried to somewhat center the laser head on the material instead, and then started the engraving job. I used Creality's recommended power and speed settings, so I really had no idea how this would come out. Just in case, I told the software to have the laser head go back to its starting point so I could run another engraving pass if it was needed. If the engraving came out okay, I then planned on testing the laser's ability to cut the shape out. At some point during the engraving, I hooked up a cheap little exhaust fan as there was a little smoke being generated during the engraving. I knew I would need something like this later anyway when I tried cutting all the way through the wood. You'll notice that the air light is orange, showing that there is a smaller amount of air coming through the air assist system for engraving. In case you're wondering, this engraving took almost 20 minutes to complete. I don't know how much more speed I could have gotten out of this thing if I played around with the settings though. You can see that when the job starts, the air LED on the laser head lights up green to show that it's sending a stronger airflow through the laser head for cutting. The vector cut took just over 30 seconds to complete. I have to admit, this little guy worked out surprisingly well. I'm going to have to try running this with some different materials to see how it does. Maybe try out the rotary engraving accessory too. And if anyone is interested in buying this after seeing the video, we'll include a link in the description below, which will also hopefully include a discount code. As far as a production machine, it's certainly not a speed demon compared to our Trotec lasers, but for only about uh, 1 50th the price, this seems like a screaming good deal. I could envision having an engraving business using just one computer running a fleet of these at only a tiny fraction of the cost of any big name laser. Heck, it's so cheap, the laser could almost be considered disposable if it goes down and can't be fixed. If you're thinking about starting an engraving business, then this would be a great way to sort of get your feet wet. If your sales increased and you found yourself needing more capacity, it would be super easy to scale up with additional machines given the small footprint and low price. Mm -hmm.